Okay, um, so I'm going to pick up where we left off, and I'm going to show you some examples of student work from uh, previous Zen Garden assignments. This isn't one of them. This is actually one that's uh, published up on the Zen Garden site. So let's just go ahead and do a walkthrough. And this is in no particular order. Uh, so, and some of these are actually old projects from different years. And so I just want you to be aware of that as we go through them. A lot of them are not responsive. You don't have to make this responsive necessarily um, unless unless I've changed uh, some stipulation in the project outline. But uh, you basically are going to um, you know, be able to look at these just for visual design ideas, uh, but you know, you don't necessarily look at the code because a lot of these are actually quite old and they use the wrong code base. So um, anyway, this is one where you know this student was really into illustration. She drew all of her own stuff, scanned it, and to give you some sense of you know, I mentioned that like you can use extra divs. Well, this uh, this leaf pattern, she'd drawn a few leaves, scanned them, and then she made a brush out of them in Illustrator. So if you know how to use Illustrator, great. If you don't, then you know this is, you could also do it in Photoshop or something. But she made this so that it's got transparency. You can see through it, and it's like this like uh, bed of leaves at the bottom. And then she drew the owl and the tree, and that's a background image. And then this is all based in fixed pixel dimensions. That's how she could be sure that things would definitely fit inside of these these little spaces, right? Okay, so um, that's one example. Um, this is another example. The student liked really clean design. Again, this is an older one, so it's fixed in uh, pixels. I don't, when I say fixed, I don't mean position colon fixed, like it's not a position property. It's a f uh, fixed dimension style, so meaning that it's not in relative units, it's in fixed units like pixels. All right, but you can see that this is actually quite a nice design, and he chose to do this differently where the select options are over on the left. A lot of people put them on the right or <clears throat> the bottom. Again, this is another one, okay? And this is one where the top and the bottom basically constrain what you're able to see, okay? So you can see how that works. So this top part is fixed and the bottom part is a fixed div. All right, and then you can just scroll through to see what's there. This student actually took a really fun approach to this assignment in that, you know, she thought about what we were doing and she said, okay, well, we have this, you know, basically the structure, like this sort of like a, a person, right? It's the body of this person. And then we can sort of play dress up with the styling. Um, and so like, you know, here that's a little cowboy, here it's a little sort of like 60s girl, I guess. And then, you know, like a little, I don't know, smart guy type. <clears throat> little punk rocker, right? And so she took this uh, approach to, you know, this idea of playing dress up with CSS, which is really fun. Um, and just so you know, like some of the stuff where it says play dress up with CSS, she actually did add that to the HTML, um, you know, but she didn't change any of the rest of the HTML. So um, actually, no, she didn't. She made that a picture, I think. She made this a picture. Okay. Um, and then this one's kind of fun in that it actually does this kind of thing, right, where you've got the scaling and you've got this sense of depth, right, based on all these layers, and all those planets are extra divs, right, and then um, the material will scroll out. You can see it like that, okay? So that one's kind of fun. This guy did something. It's, uh, it's all left-based, so no matter, you know, how I scale my browser, it's not responsive, but it's actually very lovely. You know, he did this really interesting repeating uh, design that over, you know, flips over itself. And he's got this kind of kooky other design, like I think that's Richard Nixon, right? And so you can see how he did this. And it's sort of like this sunrise or sunset or something at the bottom. That's crackers, you know. So he did this really interesting, fun, kooky design. This person decided to do something. Uh, where these are all the links, right? And then as you hover, you get these um, audio meter bars, right? It's kind of cool. And uh, this one, you can scroll uh, to the left, right? And the way that you would approach something like this is that you would need to make um, the, the wrapper, the page wrapper, you would need to tell it to be super, super wide, so wide that pretty much almost, you know, no screen could accommodate it. You might on a, say a 27 inch monitor be able to accommodate most of this screen um, and that's fine. But then on smaller windows, it basically, you know, just forces you to scroll it, which is kind of interesting, okay? So you can look at something like that. So I think several people kind of took that approach. 
and older ones. This one was really fun. This guy, whenever CSS3 was sort of new, he decided that he wanted to really play around with all these transitions. So all of this stuff is selectable text, right? So I could actually select this. And it's because he was using, tran I shouldn't say transitions, he's using transformations uh, to, to make these so that they're not in a straight line. All right, and so he literally went and cut some stuff out of magazines, scanned it, and he did this, all right? It was pretty fun. All right, so that's another example. And this student decided to, to do, these are all like cardboard cutouts, um, and what he did was he just had a texture, and he drew this, and uh, I think, I don't know if he did it in Photoshop or Illustrator, I don't remember, but um, he ended up just using fill textures with colors inside of this so that it looked like cardboard cutouts. And uh, anyway, and it's sort of like a, an assembly line conveyor belt of these people working in a warehouse, right? And it's got it's got like this stuff up here. It says, you know, CSS and stuff, divs, old HTML, right? <laughs> it's great. You know, it's really fun. And he's got these like colorful sections at the back. So you can see that he's really playing with positioning in this one. And again, this guy, sort of like the last person, ended up making something that was really uh, wide. And so you force the width of the container. So like you could make it like, you know, three, 4,000 pixels wide. You set the height and then you just for force these things to kind of float, float left, right? And they all float next to each other. Okay. Or you could also do it with absolute positioning as well. All right, this is another one that's horizontal, which is really fun. And the thing that's kind of fun about this one is like, you know, depending on <laughs> depending on how you scale it, right, <laughs> the, the guy can either, you know, be closer to the, to the woman chasing him with a rolling pin or <laughs> it's kind of funny. Anyway, um, all right, this one is, this one's beautiful. The only criticism that I would have had is that, you know, it just kind of ends right here. You know, they, they didn't make any effort to kind of fill this back in with other uh, material, but um, but this one's lovely. It's like really rich in color and texture, okay? That's another example. This one takes a totally different approach where everything is kind of hidden. And, you know, normally I would say that this isn't a great way to do a normal website, but this is kind of just a fun design project. It's very experimental, so you can do some really kind of fun stuff, right? So you could hover over these little X's and then that's where you get the content, all right? So the content is otherwise kind of hidden from view. This guy drew the entire uh, image and he scanned it. And he actually, um, <clears throat> actually, I don't know if he drew it in a, what I don't remember actually, I don't think he drew it by hand. I think he created this um, as like some sort of uh, um, Photoshop document. He might've actually drawn the, the ant uh, the ant farm first, but then he created his own typeface or his own typography with where it says CSS. He created this little ant. He did all of his drawings of an ant. Um, and uh, he made this little ant farm, which is really cool. And again, this one is fixed pixel uh, design. Uh, that's really the only way he could have made this work exactly the way he did. So the background image is just one big image that has, um, you know, the ant farm. So if you were to inspect it, for instance, and take a look at it, you can see that this is the old uh, HTML, which you're not allowed to use. Um, so uh, if you were to go, for instance, to the body, let's see where it is, div container. So he's got this image on it, this image hole. And if you were to actually look at that, you could go visit that, for instance, in a, a new tab. Oh, it's not giving me that option. Hold on. Let's try that again. Open a new tab. And you can see that he's got this this big picture file, right? And then he just basically made it so that all of the text went inside. Okay. Um, this student did something really fun, right? She made it so that everything is kind of coming out of this box that's at the bottom. Again, this box would be one of those extra divs, right? This little cloud that's floating here, that's an extra div. Um, this pig, I think, is actually part of the requirements heading. Um, so, you know, just really, really fun. And she actually drew her stuff. And then uh, I, th I think she actually scanned it. Like she scanned this piece of paper, for instance, and she had actually drawn the word participation on there. You can see that it's done with pen. <clears throat> and then she actually uh, scanned it. And actually, come to think of it, actually, I think she didn't draw the words. I think she used a, a font here. Uh, I believe she used a font here, but she did scan this piece of paper. Um, 
you can also find you know images of paper like that on the web um, and then this one is really fun she made it so that it's sort of like a an archaeological dig right you know so it's basically this is attached to the right side um, with a fixed position so it'd be like position colon fixed and it's placed so that's on top of everything and then everything else uh, just scrolls right this is really fun and again like if you were to inspect this you could go and figure out you know like where she put so here on the body is where she put the graphics so if we were to look at that in a new tab for instance she created this really large image and then um, you can see that it kind of has this dark gradient that goes to pure black so that way if she if you're on a really really big screen you can make the background of the entire page black and then it would um, over here on the the right side it would just be black right because it would uh, go go out with that gradient okay <clears throat> this is another one that is absolutely lovely she did a great job on styling all of this you can see down here below this is an extra div that's fixed to the bottom and uh, this you know this typography is actually an image but you know you could now make this with um, with web fonts okay and but she did all of her own graphics for like the headings and stuff which i think are absolutely wonderful it's this little campground um theme that she she developed right this is really terrific all right this is another good one and again this is one that is a horizontally scrolling one again using this little um image as a background for the xh and this was xhtml this was not html5 this was one of the older ones right and so but you can see how this was done. Okay, absolutely lovely. This is one where uh, you can kind of scale it and it's got this like little city. And um, hold on, actually on this one, I think, yeah, we need to kind of make it a little bit smaller. Um, and then you can see that it's got that little airplane right there and it scales uh, with, if I were to do this, you know, it scales and then you can kind of see different amounts of it differently right and I think that this student was developing hers on a laptop uh, and then whenever she got on a bigger screen she's like oh okay well you know it still sort of works right but it doesn't have to be a hundred percent responsive and perfect but she did all of her own illustrations in Illustrator this is kind of fun she you know so <clears throat> This student, uh, this is one of the HTML5 ones, and he actually made this fully responsive. So you can see that um, as it, <clears throat> excuse me, as it goes down, everything is still visible. And he kind of did this uh, surf theme, you know, and it's sort of based like off of his, uh, you know, kind of off of his uh, wetsuit. You know, he's got these zipper styles, and so this is kind of cool. And he did something really different in that I most people don't do this where the selected design up, up here, he actually made it so that it goes to the top. Normally people put this off to the side or it goes on the bottom or something. Um, and he actually felt like this was such uninteresting content, you know, this road to enlightenment stuff. He actually thought it would be really good if you just immediately put links to other people's designs at the very beginning. So I thought that was a really unique and interesting way of approaching it. There we go. And if I refresh the page, you see that you get these little animated GIFs that that move on and off the page. He's got these little transitions with uh, the Dr. Seuss characters moving on and off the page. And so he wanted to do like this little Dr. Seuss theme, which is really fun. And this one's actually fairly responsive. It's not, you know, 100% perfect whenever you, you know, get down to really small screens, but it's, it's basically responsive. Um, and uh, he had a really good time with this, as you can see. And this is an older one. Uh, again, all of the artwork was original. <clears throat> sort of this gear design. This one is a little bit more traditional, but like it looks really nice. You know, this is selectable text, which is wonderful. You know, it's got a uh, CSS drop shadow on it. These really delicately chosen different fonts. The colors are terrific. Anyway, so you can take a look at that as an example of really nice design as well. Um, and okay, that'll do it for um, the walkthrough and I just wanted to you know make sure that you had some examples that you could look at and see how you could uh, start to think about structuring your page with your CSS anyway and using extra divs and so forth. If you have any questions please let me know.